Um, and I think that's the basis of telepathy. When people are in a social group, like in a flock of... When animals are in a social group, like a flock of birds or a termite mound or a school of fish, they're all related to each other. And I think the relationship between them is because they're all within a group field, a morphic field of the group. Again, I'll talk more about these fields tomorrow. Um, so when one changes, all the others can feel it. That's why flocks of birds like starlings can fly along, thousands of them, and suddenly change direction, the whole flock, without bumping into each other. It's why schools of fish can suddenly change direction if a predator appears without bumping into each other. It's too quick to be explained by just looking at the nearest neighbors. It's a field phenomenon. I think all social animals have fields that link the members of the social group together. And when some members of the group go away, for example, when wolves go hunting to find food to feed their young, who they leave in a den, the cubs are left with a babysitter, usually the adults go hunting. Uh, this field that links them stretches rather than breaks. It's a bit like an invisible elastic band that continues to connect them. And if a change happens in one, the others can pick it up. I think that's the basis of telepathy. The closest analogy in physics is with quantum non-locality. If two electrons or two photons that have been part of the same system move apart, at, 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 uh, photons at the speed of light can move apart. If a change happens in one, the other instantaneously changes, even uh, if it's thousands of miles away. It's called quantum non-locality or non-separability. And something very similar, I think, underlies telepathy, and it typically occurs between bonded members of social groups.